Hello and welcome to Anton Math. Now we've been talking about experiments and events and in this section we're going to be talking about counting the amount of sample points in the union of two or more events. So first, talking about unions of events, we have a simple identity and that is that if S and T are two sets then the order of S union T is equal to the order of S plus the order of T minus the order of the intersection between S and T. Right? This can easily be seen by a Venn diagram. Oh, it's a little bit off the screen. Let's try that again. Right now, if this is my S, and this is my t. If I want to count how many sample points are in the union, that's counting all the sample points in this entire shape. But if I count s first, and then I count t, I've counted this area twice, right? Now this area, of course, is just s intersection t. So I need to subtract one of the s intersection t's that I counted twice. And that's exactly what this formula does here. All right, so this is a simple formula for counting the amount of sample points in the union of two events, or more generally, in counting the amount of elements in the union of two sets. So for example, how many positive integers less than 100 are relatively primed to 15? Now one way that you could do this problem is you could go through every integer, 1 through 99, and say, is this relatively prime to 15, or is it not? Well, that's a pretty tedious way to solve the problem. It's possible, but it's pretty tedious, and then you count them and, and get a number at the end. But let's use the tools we have to simplify this problem quite a bit. Now remember, relatively prime, relatively prime means that the GCD of the integer n and 15 is equal to 1, right? So for n to be relatively prime to 15, that means that n cannot have a factor of 3 or a factor of 5, right? 15 equals 3 times 5. So if n has a factor of 3 or a factor of 5, then its GCD with 15 is going to be 3 or 5, right? So we want to know how many numbers have a GCD that is 3 or a GCD that is 5 with 15. So I'm going to let f equal the set of all numbers that are multiples of 5, f for 5, right? So f equals 5, 10, 15, etc. And since we're talking about less than 100, this is going to go all the way up to 95. Now if I went all the way to 100 here, I would have 20 elements in f, right? But I didn't go all the way to 100, so the order of f is just going to be 19. I'm going to let t be all of the integers between 1 and 99 that have a um, have a multiple or have a factor of 3 or that are multiples of 3, right? So 3, 6, 9, etc. all the way up to 99. And clearly the order of t then is going to be 33. But now looking at my formula, I need to look at the intersection, don't I? Um, I need to look at the intersection f intersection t. And what f intersection t looks like, that's going to be all of the numbers that are multiples of 3 and multiples of 5, or in other words, are multiples of 15. So I'm going to have 15, 30, 45, 60, 75, and 90. So the order of this intersection, f intersected with t, is going to be 6. So by my formula, f union t or the order of f union t is the order of f plus the order of t minus the intersection which we found to be 19 plus 33 minus 6 which is going to give us 46. Now 46 is not the answer, right? We want to find out how many positive integers less than 100 are relatively prime to 15. Now what I found here is that there are 46 numbers that are not relatively prime to 15, right? Their GCD is either 3, 5, or 15. So my answer is going to be 99 minus the order of f union t, or in other words, 99 minus 46, which gives us 53. 
So there are 53 natural numbers less than 100 that are relatively prime to 15. Okay, now we can use this to come up with another little formula using what's called the rule of sum. Now the rule of sum is that the order of a set S is equal to the order of S intersected with some other set T plus the order of S minus T. Right? So what we're doing now is we're counting all of the elements in S, but we're doing that by counting all of the elements in S that are also in T, and then adding to that all of the elements in S that are not in T. Right? So of course this total is going to give us the order of S, because every element in S is either in T or is not in T. There's nothing that's that doesn't fall into one of these two categories. Now combining this with our previous identity, recall that our previous identity right, was S union T equals the order of S plus the order of T minus the intersection. So combining this identity with this identity, in other words I'm going to substitute in for this order of S, I'm going to get that the S union T the order of S union T is equal to the order of T plus the order of S minus T. Right? I substitute in S intersection T plus S minus T for this S. The S intersection T cancelled with this negative S intersection T and I was just left with order of T plus order of S minus T. Now this makes sense again, right? Because S union T is all the elements in S or T without any repetition. So here I get all of the elements in T, and here I get all of the elements in S that are not in T. So looking at a Venn diagram type of situation, if this is my S and this is my T, this first step, order of T, counts all of the elements here in T, and the second step, order of S minus T, well that's just going to count all the elements in this part. I'm not going to be double counting the intersection this time. So this is properly counting the union S union T. So let's have an example of this idea. There are 40 students in discrete math and 50 students in calculus. 20 students are in both. How many students are there? Well, I'm going to let D be the number of students in discrete and we'll let C be the students in calculus, the set of students in calculus. So the order of D union C is going to be the total number of students, right? We know the union is going to take out all that repetition. Well, using this second formula that we have here, this is going to be the order of discrete plus the order of calculus minus discrete. Or I could do order of calculus plus the order of discrete minus calculus. It doesn't matter which role each set plays here, as long as they play either T or S, right? Now the number of students in discrete is 40, and the number of students in calculus that are not in discrete is going to be 30, right? There are 50 students in calculus, but 20 of those students are in discrete, so there's 30 students in calculus minus discrete, which of course gives me 70 total students. So there are 70 total students, and this is how we use this principle. Now we have one more formula for counting the union of two sets or events called the principle of inclusion and exclusion. It's a bit more complicated. It deals with more than two sets. So we're going to cover that now in the next video. We'll see you there.